What's going on everybody? Welcome to The Black Couch and today we got a brand new episode. Today we are featuring Dr. Walter Lee. Dr. Walter Lee, uh, he is CEO of Impactful Enterprises. Um, he does a number of things and you're about to see his journey and his ideology of entrepreneurship and the things that have brought him from one place to another. So definitely stay tuned. Uh, before we go into that, Black Couch, man, I am so glad to announce to you that the Black Couch is expanding. We're now on podcast networks. That's Apple Podcasts, Google Play. Uh, we will be on Spotify. We will be uh, on iHeartRadio. Thank Special shout out to the Free Thinkers Network for allowing us to, to tag into their network and bring you the Black Couch on multiple platforms. So definitely, if you're listening to uh, the podcast, definitely uh, rate the podcast and you know let us know what you think. Um, you can also catch us every Tuesday at 12 o'clock right here on theblackcouch.org. And now I bring to you a special episode, our first episode of the new year, Dr. Walter Lee, Impactful Enterprises. Dr. Walter Lee. Yes, sir. Dr. Walt, mm -hmm. as as we we know you now. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's been uh, a number of years since About eleven we, years. Yeah, eleven years since twelve. Since we were going on twelve. Yeah, going on twelve. Yeah. It's twenty nineteen now. Oh uh, yeah, it is. We got to learn that all over again. <laughs> really Every good. year I sign papers with the previous year for the like the first two three weeks of the <laughs> year, and then I job. finally get it. <laughs> Yeah, so we're here in 2019, um, and thank you for agreeing to be on uh, the first episode of The Black Couch for the new year. And um, I wanted to interview you. I wanted you to be a part of this show because um, you have uh, started on an entrepreneurship journey. And actually, this is not nothing new for you, you know. Yeah. You, you have done a lot of ventures and stuff. So let's start off by talking about, um, like, what sparked entrepreneurship like what, what is that for you why did you want to go that journey versus you know the i guess the normal path that we've been taught to go got it so entrepreneurship is nothing new for me hmm. um the only new part that i'm waiting to experience is getting rich <laughs> off of entrepreneurship but it's not new at all um i started in entrepreneurship ever since the end of elementary school hmm. and middle school um, I started a desktop printing business before I knew anything about Adobe Photoshop. Wow. It was PowerPoint. It was um, especially Microsoft Publisher. Mm. Um, so as a kid, I was doing like church programs, wedding mm. programs, wedding invitations, wow. business cards, flyers, obituaries, a lot of the printing needs within the community I oversaw a lot of. Wow. Um, which brought me a significant amount of money for a middle schooler. Right. right. Um, and then in high school, I started the Germany, and it was called Anton's Famous Printing, hmm. AFP. Um, by the time I got in high school, I was printing and um, producing graduation announcements hmm. for high schoolers. Wow. Um, so here I was, a sophomore freshman. Um, it was one of my mom's best friends who was the assistant, the assistant principal at the time okay. at Holly Hill Roberts High School, gotcha. which transitioned into Lake Marion. Mm. She was like, don't you do invitations? I have somebody who is two weeks out from graduation and they don't have any. Can you make some? Because mm. I remember your mom saying you can. <laughs> I made it for one person. And the next day I had to make it for another person. Wow. And the next day I had to make it for another. And so it started picking up and gradually building itself because mm. it wasn't something that I asked for. Mm. I just showed up and I was prepared and I was ready. Um, and for years after that, all four years of my high school career, I knew that March, April, May were going to be the busiest <laughs> times of the school year. So okay. here I was with finals and things and midterms right. and then also dealing with um, graduation announcements that I was creating. Um, I did get a job in high school, my first job at Utopia Restaurant and Lounge. So people who are in the Low Country, Holly mm. Hill area may know exactly wow. what that is. Right. 
didn't last long. Mm. It was my, maybe about six months because I noticed the amount of time that I was putting into work mm. there, I was multiplying that in one night with what I was doing. Mm. And so eventually I was like, you know what? This is good. It's good to meet people and network and that kind of stuff. But right now I profit more over here. Wow. And so after about six months of working there, um, I walked away. Um, because I saw that my own journey was perhaps more important at the time. That's good. Um, in college, yeah, that's in good college, it didn't change ah. because I was um, a peer counselor with the Trio Support Services Program at Claflin, and everybody knew me as the barber. Right, you were my barber. Right for a period of time. So I was cutting hair wow. throughout my college career. I was doing fifty to eighty heads a week <laughs> wow. at five dollars. <laughs> At five dollars, you saw how much money I was losing, <laughs> and I see now why I had so much clientele. <laughs> but organization and structure has been a, a strength of mine. Mm. So what I would do is put like it was called first Sunday cuts mm. because I remember as a kid we always had to make sure that our haircut was sharp for first, first Sunday because it's communion Sunday, right. and everybody was wearing their white robes and white shirt and black suits and all that kind of stuff. So we would go on early on Sunday mornings from uh, Cousin Joey mm. to get a haircut. Oh, wow. And so I named it First Sunday Cuts because I always had my sharpest cut on First Sundays. Wow. Um, and I had a sign-up sheet on the door with the dates and times around my schedule, around choir rehearsal with Clapham University Gospel Choir, mm -hmm. so that people could sign up mm. um, for the days they wanted haircuts. Yeah, wow. And if they didn't show up in 10 minutes, that slot was gone. I'm no longer doing it. Um, I also had to marry that with the dynamics of having a roommate mm. um, because in having a roommate, they perhaps did not want the traffic in and right, out. Right, right. So I had to then be a lot more accommodating and considerate. So mm. then the schedule got slim and then I grew into, you know, becoming a junior and senior matriculation. That is becoming a junior and senior and um, the coursework got heavier. Mm. So then I understood the rule of supply and demand. Mm. I can't cut all these people hair, so I went up my my prices. Well, I lost some clients, but I mean, what I was charging made up for it, so yeah. I didn't lose anything. Yeah. Yeah. And finally, I had to um, stop that because of student teaching and deciding to move to the upstate. Well, even after being a teacher full time, I was doing musicianship and directorship on the side. So, I mean, while it's considered. Um, a job, if you will, it was still a means of figuring out how to how to profit on my own. Right, right, right. Um, and nonetheless, I was also cutting hair <laughs> while I was <laughs> playing and directing yeah. and teaching and getting a master's in EDS. I was still doing it. And then now, with the PhD, here I am doing resume writing and Dr. Walt's Natural Essentials and Motivational Apparel under a company. So it's three different brands under one company, Impactful Enterprises. So again, as you said, mm -hmm. entrepreneurship is not new, but what I said, I haven't gotten rich off it yet. Yeah. I'm still waiting on yeah. it. Yeah. I'm still waiting. Yeah. It's still a journey. Mm -hmm. So in, in your journey to where you were, to where you are now, um, what are some of the most important things that you, you realize? Because um, one thing that you said was the time that you take and the effort that you take building someone else's mm -hmm. brand or, or continuing someone else's brand, um, you have a product and you realize that product that you have of your own that you can basically make more and do more. What are some of the other lessons that you learned since um, having those kind of realizations? What are some of the things that open up for you? So I think the biggest lessons that I've learned and throughout this journey of entrepreneurship as well as growth and maturation is... Um, and all I do, it's an extension of how I see myself. Mm. It's all an extension of how I see myself or what I see myself being capable of doing and accomplishing. Mm. If I don't think I can be a business owner, mm. I won't do it. And if I don't think I can reach the goals that I may have the capacity to set, I won't do it. And so... It wasn't necessarily a journey of starting a business. Mm -hmm. It was a journey of building capacity. It was a journey of building confidence. And mm -hmm. I saw a lot of areas of insecurity mm -hmm. in that process. I saw a lot of um, areas where I was my own holdup. And mm -hmm. in many cases, even now, because it's still a perpetual journey, it does not end. 
Um, so I recognize that it's an extension of me. And until I do the work to address what's going on with me, my business will suffer. Relationships will suffer. Networking will suffer. Mm -hmm. Finances will suffer until I fix some of those inner issues. Well, let me ask you something. Those are a lot of areas that that you came to the realization that you needed to work on. Mm -hmm. What was the work involved to get past those deficiencies? Mm -hmm. Like, what are some of the things that you, was it the books that you read? Mm -hmm. Was it a prayer that you made? Like, mm -hmm. what is it like? Did you walk out the door and like, oh, snap, I can do this. Like, what was it for you? Um, it was partially my PhD work mm. um, in self-concept development. It was of African-American middle schoolers, mm. um, but everyone has a self-concept or self-image. And that is the way we see ourselves. Mm. And me writing and studying and reading, mm. I could not help but beg to question, what is my self-concept? How do I see myself? Um, and that was you know, what was awakening for me, which then bred me connecting to others who were doing what I wanted to do, um, asking questions, um, being honest about what I was strong in and weak in. Mm. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but throughout here you may see um, post-it notes on doors mm. and on mirrors mm. and on the bedposts so that I can constantly mm. expose myself to affirmative thoughts and positivity. Wow. Um, there are books that'll just be sitting around. If I'm in bed, I can always roll over and grab a book. Um, I keep one in the car. I keep one. And these are books that take me a while to read because I read it in that fashion. <laughs> yeah. um, it's in my book bag. I keep it, you know, just in many different places. So I can always pick up something mm. when necessary. But a part of the the essential part of that was um, staying true to my experience. Mm. Um, mm. I don't want to say tell the truth because I mean the only way to get the truth is to get a culmination of all experiences. Right, right, right. That's true. And That's true. I think a lot of people are offended when you say your truth, my truth. Mm -hmm. I mean it it perhaps is not the truth. It's an experience. Yes. Yeah. And until we're able to convey those in a respectful form. Um, we won't be able to get to truth. Um, for me, I had to be truthful and honest about my experience um, and how I was feeling. What about working with this client frustrated mm -hmm. me? Mm -hmm. And why did I choose to wow. be frustrated? Wow. Because that was an emotion that showed up, frustration. And what I could do was accept it and deal with it, or I could reject it. Mm -hmm. Rejecting it does not fix it. So how do I then come? What I recognize is I was getting frustrated with them because I didn't have a policy in place. Mm, right, right. I immediately right. ceased to be frustrated because I put a policy in place. And now everyone has to honor it. And even I do as well. And so now I don't have to be frustrated. Wow. Wow. That's, that's good. I ch you choose good. to be frustrated or you choose to devise a solution. That's good. One of the things that I want the black couch to be for people is us having a conversation about it's it's not hard mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying it's, well it's not impossible mm -hmm. it, the work can be hard yeah. but it's not impossible and we all go through the same things you know we all definitely go through the same thing you heard the song by i think it's tevin campbell no oh, what's wrong with it? i think tevin campbell is from the 80s and he was saying the, the title of the song was round and round Mm. And one thing he said was, the only thing that comes from talking is sound. <laughs> yeah. Wow. The only thing that comes from talking is sound. Mm. And the only thing that comes from decisions are outcomes. Mm. And so we can talk about it, mm. but at the end of the day, we're going to have to make a decision. Do I want to do it or not? And for I'm, I'm in a transition stage because I'm in a place where I'm taking on more responsibilities. Gotcha. Yeah. And I'm like... Others may say, well, you can't do that at this point. You can't do Dr. Walt. You won't have time. It's not a matter of rejecting the notion of being able to do it. It's now asking the question and begging the answer, how can I do right. it? Right. How can I do right. it and continue doing it effectively? Right. Right. And it may be that I need a team or it may be that I may need to schedule more appropriately. You know, everything right. in that case, it doesn't necessarily require the petition through prayer. Mm. Um, because in some cases we've already given given the answers. Yeah, yeah. Um, we do have to seek prayer, however, to centralize ourselves with what purpose and destiny has already created and aligned. Um, but we have to sit down, ask questions, and be willing to tell the truth about it. 
I answer it. And honestly, sometimes in that is a form of prayer for me. Mm-hmm. You know, sitting back and like, okay, Lord, if this is something that you told me to do, how I'm going to do it? Yeah. And then the thoughts come to you. Then mind. it comes the to schedule. Mind. Comes yeah. To you yeah. Mind. You get a phone yeah. call or something yeah. like that. It's like, can you do this? Oh, we can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Then, then it works out. Right. You know. Right. right. Um, it's you know just like you said, just having that mm-hmm. that, that center. Right. You know, that center being, you know, sometimes it's, for some people it's meditation, some mm-hmm. people it's prayer, some people uh, it's, it's just a, 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 a self, um, being in touch with self, mm-hmm. you know, so that, that's very important. So right. let's, let's talk about you have many degrees, mm-hmm. many degrees. Um, we're educated men. Mm-hmm. What's the importance of education? And what are some of the deficiencies in, that you've seen through the educational system when it comes down to what you're doing now? Well, so um, hmm. I'm gonna be nice about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be nice about it. So I'm not exactly sure that um, education is functioning the way that it should. Mm. Um, you know, education comes from the do the the the, the Latin word um, um, educo educo. Okay. Um, which basically means to guide, to draw out from within. Hmm. Um, and also a part of being educated is developing the faculties of our minds, hmm. not necessarily learning information. Hmm. We learn information to develop the ability to think. Right. And I'm not exactly sure that many people have developed the faculty of their minds through school. Hmm. Because how is it that those who start businesses may not have a degree in business, but they're able to just do it? That something about the development of the faculties of their mind, which enable them to think business-like. Mm. So in education, having degrees, it's not enough to have degrees. You prove that you can learn. You prove that you can follow instructions. You prove that you can write a paper. But that doesn't mean the faculties of your mind have been developed. Mm. That's Can you think independently? Um, and if you can, it should show up in your life. <laughs> right. It application should. of it. Mm-hmm. The application of it. I think that's one of the things that having a formal education um, have done for me. Um, like we were discussing uh, when I was getting my master's, mm-hmm. there's certain ideologies that they had that right. fueled, you know, business and entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. Um but I can't say that everybody have that same, right. uh, they didn't get that same ideology, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, it's always the big question, uh, should you go to college or should you not go to college? Um, I, I promote college because of what it has done for me. Mm-hmm. Um, it, you know, meeting people. You right. know, we would right. have never met if I didn't go to South Carolina State, you didn't go to Claflin. Mm-hmm. You know, we just, the, the the path probably wouldn't have crossed. Mm-hmm. Um, and even some of the experiences that I had in college is rewarding, you know, and it, it, it helped me in my business, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But uh, that's, it's always a, su- uh, a, a touchy subject mm-hmm. because it, it it's really um, your focus behind it. And of course you can, just like you said, like uh, sometimes uh, the things that you are taught or is funneled towards a certain system or ideology, but then that's not the case for everyone. Right. So let's consider this possibility. What if school gets in the way of education? Mm. What if mm. all that people want to become, they recognize that they can't get it through school or through a system? Through the school system. That okay. passes on information. Um, what if that were a truth for someone? Um, what if they have goal visions of themselves already written out? What if um, they have the, the course of action to attain those visions and school as we know it isn't a part of it? Mm. Because our ancestors mm-hmm. were able to do it without school. Mm-hmm. That's true. That's true. And well, develop the faculty of their mind. Right, right. And next week on part two, with Dr. Walter Lee. Back to the body butter. Um, I started, uh, made my first batch and just put it online and said, hey, I'm coming to the low country. I got some body butter. Ooh, what is that? Ooh, it looks delicious. No, 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 you don't eat it. (laughs) It's the skin. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. Please stay tuned for next week's episode where we continue the conversation with Dr. Walter Lee. 
And um, again, we're on uh, Apple Podcasts. You can definitely listen to the podcast on your Apple device or your Android device. Uh, check us out on Google Play. Um, we're also on Spreaker.com. So if you have the Spreaker app, you can look for us. Uh, hashtag Black Couch. Um, don't forget to uh, check us out on Instagram. Um, the underscore Black underscore Couch. Also on Facebook. So join our support team uh, and spread the message. There'll be like promos and different things that you can participate. You can have your uh, ideas put on. So definitely we want to make this community bigger. So thank you guys for watching. If you are listening, thank you for listening. And we'll see you next week as we continue the conversation with Dr. Walter Lee.